Systems, patented tools for the perfect brake job. Welcome to Phoenix Systems Brake Strip Extended Training. In this training, we will be covering everything from map guidelines, brake fluid and brake fluid testing, brake strips, how they work and the research behind them, and finally, how to maximize brake fluid exchange revenue in your shop. Now in 1996, the Motors Assurance Program, also known as MAP, they were created to protect the interest of the auto repair industry and vehicle owners. Now MAP's mission is to ensure consistency in inspections of vehicles and communication of that inspection to the customers. MAP asked industry professionals to come together to create a uniform inspection communication standards. Shops needed uniformity in repair recommendations and customers needed more information to make an educated decision about the recommended repairs. Now MAP assembled a committee to create guidelines. They acquired many people from the brake industry, specifically manufacturing and service companies. The committee first came up with the common reasons as to when and why to change brake fluid. Some technicians say every 24,000 miles, others say every 36 months. Some use words like hydroscopic or say brake fluid absorbs moisture which causes brake fluid to boil, creating a loss of brake pedal. Some say replace if brake fluid color is dark. Others say it's just a good thing to do. Very unscientific. So what's right? The sources listed here were used by MAP committee to create guidelines based on scientific evidence and proof that brake fluid change was required. Now the base of brake fluid is polyethylene glycol, which is antifreeze. PEG is used to make many products from laxatives to paintball fill. Let's take a look at what DOT 3, DOT 4, and DOT 5 really mean. The DOT standards set up by the Department of Transportation test wet and dry boiling points in corrosion. Other tests are viscosity, evaporation, and its effect on rubber. The test for wet and dry boiling shows how moisture can lower the boiling point or the temperature where brake fluid begins to boil. This test is done by boiling the brake fluid first dry with no moisture, then 3.7% water is added to determine the boiling point. As you can see with DOT 3, 401 Fahrenheit is the dry boiling point, and with the water added, it goes down considerably to 284 degrees Fahrenheit as the wet boiling point. Borate esters are added to raise the boiling point. The truth about brake fluid being hydroscopic is, yes, it is, meaning that it absorbs moisture. But it's very rare to find a vehicle brake system that has a fluid at a low boiling point because of moisture. Now, OE fluids have higher boiling points today, and the brake system designs have changed. One of these changes is that brake hoses used to have rubber inner liners, which didn't resist moisture. Today's hoses have EPDM, which doesn't let the air in. Private studies have shown that less than 3% of the cars actually having possibility of a moisture problem, it's like looking for a needle in a haystack for having a brake system with a low boiling point. MAP's position on moisture is that moisture is an issue with brake fluid, but no boiling point specifications for used brake fluid exist, so MAP has no recommendations based upon moisture. The next test is the corrosion test. They take a small strip of metal and put it in the brake fluid and see how long it takes for it to corrode. There are other tests that include viscosity, evaporation, and the effect on rubber. Brake fluid corrosion inhibitors have two ways to protect the brake system. There are buffering amines, which reduce the acidic levels, and filming amines that protect the metals from corrosion. It is important to change the brake fluid when replacing components like calipers to ensure that the filming amines are present in the brake system. Brake fluid has one main additive and that is a corrosion inhibitor package. And the difference in brake fluid, different pricing and quality of brake fluid is due to the formulation of brake fluid and the formulation of the corrosion. Inhibitors. A common reason that technicians recommend changing the brake fluid is because the color begins to get darker. Well, the question is, is this right or wrong? The fact is, color does not prove contamination. New fluid specifications can be colorless to amber, but the dye from the seals and hoses may cause the brake fluid to turn dark and not have any effect on performance of the brake fluid. New vehicles have been found to have dark fluid even before being driven. One of the first things that MAP Brake Fluid Task Committee discovered was that General Motors, Ford, and Chrysler do not have service intervals for brake fluid. 
These domestic manufacturers say don't change the brake fluid unless you can prove it's contaminated. All imports have service intervals at 24 to 36 months or 24 to 36,000 miles. The two main functions of brake fluid are, one, hydraulic pressure on the brake components to slow the vehicle, which is obvious. The second is to protect the brake system from corrosion. Copper is the first metal to corrode, so it is an early warning for iron corrosion. Copper present in the brake fluid has a direct relationship to its depleted corrosion inhibitors. Every vehicle has a different mileage or month when the corrosion starts to happen. This is due to the following factors. The original brake fluid's chemical and thermostability, possibility the brake system design is too small for the weight of the vehicle, operator driving habits, are they stopping on the pedal all the time and stopping short? Outside temperature and road service can also play into these problems. The Office of Defect Investigation under NHTSA acquired the help of scientists at the National Institute in Standards and Technology, NIST, to study ABS modules. What the NIST study found was that in ABS systems, there is a mixing of brake fluid, resulting in the corrosion inhibitor concentration decreasing faster. Also, in the ABS systems, there are closed tolerant valves that must operate quickly and more concisely than conventional braking systems. ABS systems are more susceptible to degradation and performance due to corrosion or deposits. The NHTSA investigated sudden increased pedal travel due to a leak in the modulator's dump valve. The reason for this study was these modulators were taken out of a vehicle that were in a crash and the sheriff, after investigating the accident, had found that the brake pedal and brakes were working fine, but there were no skid marks in the accident, and the vehicle owner said that he stepped on the brake pedal and the car just did not stop. Their finding of the cause of the valve's leak was a very small particle of pure copper present in the area of the valve's dump seat and sealing surface. If the valve seat does not seal when you put on the brakes in an ABS system, you have only low pressure and no high pressure to stop the vehicle. Copper, where does it come from? Steel brake lines are lined with copper to make brake lines seamless. This is where the copper comes from in the brake system. Now here are some pictures of corrosion. Copper is an early warning for iron corrosion, an indicator of lost buffering capabilities, and causes iron to corrode rapidly. In an SAE paper that Jackson wrote, after 30 months of service, copper reached 200 parts per million. Dr. Ricker at NIST said, the hypothesis that copper corrodes slowly during the normal service, then resulting in accumulation of copper ions in brake fluid, and then can be transported to other parts of the braking system, thus causing corrosion of metals and alloys once the corrosion inhibitors become depleted. Here is a chart that shows the relationship to copper versus iron. On the left hand side here, you can see that we have iron in parts per million, and across the bottom is copper in parts per million. You can see the brown is the iron in which it goes up the scale in relationship to copper. As copper increases, so does the iron. Here is the map guideline for brake fluid. At or beyond OEM service interval suggests service. Brake fluid type incorrect requires flushing. Now to make sure that you have the correct brake fluid type, use brake strip ID to check if the brake fluid is dot three or dot four. Contaminated required flushing. Corrosion inhibitors depleted requires flushing. A copper content of 200 parts per million or greater indicates a depletion of corrosion inhibitors in the brake fluid. Hydraulic component overhaul or replacement suggests flushing. And the reason for this is, you need to add new fluid to have corrosion inhibitors put on the new component. This will give the new component a filming amine that will protect it from future corrosion. Phoenix Systems brake strip is the only brake fluid corrosion test that will determine the 200 parts per million to meet the MAP guideline. The brake strip is not a moisture test. It measures contaminating metals, which is copper. It's accurate and consistent, and the test results last for over 30 days. Easy for anybody to interpret the results of how much copper is in the brake fluid. To show us how to use brake strips, we've asked two guys' garage to demonstrate this for us. And I'm going to get up here and check out the copper levels on the brake fluid. Well, contrary to popular belief, you can't check it by tasting it. You can't check it by looking at it. You've got to actually do a test. 
And from Phoenix Systems, we've got this brake check, this brake strip. And what we're looking for is copper. I'm gonna come down here and show you the chart. So you put it down, this works within a minute, so it's really easy. And all you do is read the chart. The copper is actually inside of the steel lines, slowly corroding and wanting to work out into your brake system. Yeah, now that copper is there on purpose. The OEMs put it in there. But it's the corrosiveness of the fluid and the breakdown, it starts to get that copper you know, in, in the fluid itself, and the system will let you test that level and tell you how good the fluid is and whether you need to change it or not. Here's an independent study of copper in relationship to the darkness of purple on the strip. Here's zero parts per million copper, which there's no purple at all. And as it goes up to nine, it turns a little pink, and even darker past 30 parts per million. At 154, you can see how dark the purple is, and here is a very dark 365 parts per million of copper. The best thing to do for your customer is to test, don't guess. Dip the brake strip into the brake fluid. Attach the brake strip results to the repair order making an informed customer. This will increase your brake fluid flush sales. Use brake strips on every inspection. To review the reasons to suggest that a brake flush are beyond service intervals, remember there are no service intervals for General Motors, Ford, or Chrysler so you will have to test. Brake fluid type incorrect. Contaminant with moisture which is a rare and hard to prove, or contaminated with oil by seeing spongy rubber parts. Contaminated with corrosion is the most popular reason you will find that brake fluid should be replaced. Here is the customer's brake fluid corrosion test results card that comes with the brake fluid test kit. You can see the color turns darker purple as it goes up to 300 parts per million. At 100 parts per million of copper, it is probably a good time to suggest that the customer replace the vehicle brake fluid before it gets up to 200 or 300 parts per million of copper. On the back of the card is information for customers. They can take it with them to see why there was a recommended brake fluid change. It tells them why we tested. Just like engine oil, coolant, and transmission fluid, brake fluid wears over time. This leaves the brake system vulnerable to corrosion. Corrosion can damage the anti-lock brake system and metal components. If you see purple, it's time to change your brake fluid and extend the life of your brake system. Brake fluid flushing pressure to the reservoir is the best method. Apply brakes a few times to suspend contaminants in the brake fluid. Two, remove old brake fluid and contaminants from the reservoir. Three, add new brake fluid to the reservoir. Four, Hold down brake pedal to allow fluid to flow properly through the master cylinder. 5. To flush, perform OE bleeding instructions. 6. Use at least one quart to a half a gallon of new brake fluid to pass through the system. Flow an equal amount of brake fluid through each bleeder. Here are some testimonials from some of our customers. The test strips are great, and most of the brake flushes come from the test strips. The guys love to use them, and it makes them extra money. The brake flush strips have increased flush system sales 70% at our location over the previous year. Test strips work great and increase the trust factor in the relationships with my customers. Brake flush profits. Let's think about it. Price of service $70. Quart brake fluid $5. Technician's labor $15. Your profit $50. How many can you do in a month? 10? 30? 50? Do what's good for you and for your customer. Phoenix Systems, patented tools for the perfect brake job.